Okay, let's check in with Nate Rogers, who's back in Brooklyn at the site of the nail salon that has caused so much controversy. After the brawl, you've seen the fight. Protesters are back at it, and they want to know why weren't more people arrested? Nate, what's going on? Bill, I'll tell you, there aren't as many protesters at the nail salon salon today compared to what we saw yesterday, but those in attendance still maintaining the same theme, shut them down. No, you're not. You're not going to get away with it. We're going to shut you down. Several signs now posted on the salon gate, one of them saying, quote, black women matter. Protesters say race is definitely an issue. This was in Pro Pro uh, Park Slope of <laughs> Brooklyn Heights, and these, these women were predominantly wealthy Caucasian women. Would they got hit with broomsticks? That answers your question. Now, Bill, all of this stems from this very nasty fight captured on now viral cell phone and surveillance video inside the salon on Friday. Thelma Medley says she and her granddaughter were punched and beaten with sticks and brooms after refusing to pay for a bad eyebrow job. She also says that one of the workers threw acetone on her face during the brawl. As a matter of fact, that same night, people was complaining about how they're talking to people. Enough is enough. And they got the right family now. Now, Bill, the salon manager tells me the family had pedicures as well, but wouldn't pay for any of the services. What I would have to say to my, my Asian brothers and sisters is that we just want you to treat us with some type of respect. And, and, and the, healing, the healing process, it has to begin now. And finally, Bill, protesters also tell me the charges in this case are not fair. Protesters call the granddaughter Christina Thomas a victim in this case. The 21-year-old is charged with assault, menacing, and harassment. Protesters also tell me they also want to know why at least five of the salon workers can be seen fighting in the video, but only one of those salon workers was charged. NYPD says they're still in the early stages of their investigation. Police also tell me, Bill, quite interesting, there could be more charges in this case. Bill? Okay. Thank you, Nate. Appreciate it. All right, let's bring in a legal expert. He's a former prosecutor. He's a regular guest on this show, and he is a defense attorney. Bob Bianchi joins me. Bob, how you doing? Good, Bill. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing great. One of the big questions is, why was the person who is, by some, saying, look, this is the alleged victim, uh, the granddaughter who had the dispute over the eyebrow procedure, why was she arrested along with the, um, the woman in the store wielding the broomstick? You know, Bill, as odd as it's going to sound, I've actually handled a case very similar to this in the past. And it's not the first incident that happens in a beauty parlor nail salon uh, where things go really crazy. I don't know all the investigative details, but obviously the police believe, based upon the information they received at the time, that each one of them was in a mutually combative, assaultive scenario and arrested both and basically tell the judge you've got protesters out there that have effectively shut down these businesses and you are now jeopardizing the employment of the folks that had nothing to do with this you're jeopardizing the community service of people who may or may not have had appointments and uh, you're potentially risking violence at what point will law enforcement step in and say hey guys you've made your point we got to keep the streets clear yeah, bill it's a great point let's start off with point one but let's take our time because a lot of times what we think we know in the beginning of a case turns out not to be wholly accurate. Secondly, law enforcement needs to step in at a certain point in time and say, we respect your right to protest. You can do that, but you can't do that if it's going to lead to violence or disruption of businesses, including that business. Thanks, Bob. Always good to talk to you. Thanks, Bill. All right, let's bring in our A-plus panel for tonight's show. I'm joined by Republican strategist Jeanette Hoffman. Good to see you, Jeanette. Thanks, Bill. Immigration attorney Afia Yunus, back with us two days in a row, Afia. Good to see you. <laughs> you too, Bill. Uh, Jeanette, I'm going to start with you. Uh, you know, I had this conversation with Bob. You saw the piece we did last night on this. Uh, it seems to me that it has devolved somewhat in terms of the protests. You know, 75 people, then it's 150 people. Then they march down to another store with the same awning, um, and it went right to shut them down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's disturbing to me how quickly this escalated between, you know, the, the customer and the store and then the fight and then it, the whole community seems to be engaged. Avia, to that point, even beyond the community involvement, why is everybody so quick to lump everybody in a category? 
Like all of a sudden it's everybody at the nail salon is in trouble. How about it's not the community, maybe it's just some irate customer that got out of control. And again, I don't know all the facts, but seeing that video, the woman in the white shirt throwing a punch and pushing her, it seems like there is an argument to be made about self-defense on the part of the store owner. So do we even know if the community was being disrespected? There's something underlying here, which is the tension of an immigrant business coming into a predominantly African-American community, um, taking their money, starting a business, and then, you know, quote unquote, disrespecting them. Mm -hmm. There's something there. These communities should come together and have some conversation about why there's so much tension and why this escalated and devolved into something it really didn't have to be. Okay, thanks guys.